I stood there in the living room with Kim and my two young sons looking at me and the look of horror on their face as they watched blood dripping from my hand and glass pieces sticking out of my hand. I looked down at them and realized that I had a major problem going on. At 26 years old, I was doing the very thing that I didn't want to do, and that was beginning to alienate my wife and children. Well, at that time, I, I'd been drinking. I, I started drinking as a teenager, and it continued to escalate. And, and the only thing I could think of was that I needed to quit drinking. That was all I could think of that would solve this problem that I felt, this anger. And as I, so I did. I quit drinking cold turkey. I, I wish I could tell you that that solved the problem, but unfortunately the problem was deeper than that. The anger went deeper, the rage went deeper, and over the next several years it, it continued to escalate. It escalated to the point where I began to get physical with my wife. and. There were times when everybody in the house was just afraid. They were afraid to be around me. They were afraid. They didn't know when I would explode or what would set me off. And um, finally, in 1993 or so, 33 years old, I realized that I needed some help. And a year after we started counseling was, was when we really hit the bottom. And I thought I was gonna lose everything. She'd had her fill and had enough of me. I had alienated her and created fear in my home. And, had no idea how to really solve it. And um, I had no idea though what was in store that summer when she finally gave me that ultimatum. That's at that same time I have I had a brother who I have a brother who was inviting me to go to a men's conference with him. The last thing I wanted to do was take three days off and drive to Colorado and and go to some conference that I had no idea what it was. But I also knew that I was desperate. I was 34 years old at the time. I met Jesus when I was 13, but spent the next 20 years living life completely on my own. And he let me. And um, I was at the end of myself at that point. I didn't know what else to do. I was about to lose everything. And so I went to this conference with him. The first speaker talked and, and gave an opportunity for those of us who either wanted to know Jesus for the first time or um, come back to him and invited us to come forward. And I did that. I, I, I nearly ran to the front and I just, in my broken state, just gave myself to, to God fully and completely and just said, I have nowhere else to turn but to you and I'm at the end of myself. Take this mess from me. Just, I need your help, I'm desperate. So in my excitement as we were driving home um, and, and considering everything that I'd learned and all the things that I'd, I'd heard over the weekend, I really couldn't wait to get home and to put into practice some of the things that, that I'd learned. And although I had changed over this weekend, I knew that I had in my heart, I, know, I knew I had changed. The woman that I came home to was the same woman that I'd left three days before. The same person who had been so deeply hurt over the last 15 years. And so I realized I had a long road ahead of me when I got home. And I got together with some other men 
when I came home from the conference and together we began to study scripture and look at what God has to say about being a godly man. And while I began to rebuild my relationship with Kim, they poured their lives into me slowly over time with their encouragement and, and being obedient to, to Christ and being in the word and slowly I began to rebuild that trust. I, I don't even know if I realized it, but it, it literally would take 10 years from that point, that point of desperation, that point of brokenness to rebuild complete trust from my wife. And one day, I don't even remember where we were at or what we were doing, but she just almost casually uh, looked at me in the eyes and she said, I just want you to know that I trust you. And I, I think that was, for me, everything had been worth it. There was something else that occurred at that conference. Um, I didn't realize it at the time, but God planted a seed in my heart, in my life, to help other men. I realized in the relationships that I developed following the conference that there are a lot of other men out there that are hurting and that are that are heading off in wrong directions and are hurting people and and they don't know what they don't know. They don't know what I didn't know. And God planted that seed in my heart to to just help other men in the in this journey of godly manhood, authentic manhood. And on April 1st, 2006, we launched Focal Point Ministries as a full-time ministry and I've been in vocational ministry to men in the local church ever since. Our heart and our passion is the local church. I believe that that's where it has to start. That's where men are in relationship to each other. That's where men learn and grow. Pastors and men's leaders building into their lives. They're in relationship in small groups together in the local church. At Focal Point Ministries, we focus on three things. We focus on discipleship, coaching, and conferencing. Here's a little bit more of an in-depth look at what this ministry does. One, one of the things that's really neat with, with the conference is that um, you can have uh, your 13-year-old son alongside you at this conference and it's going to be, they're going to cover topics that are that speak to the heart of men, but it's going to be appropriate, it's going to fit them in. So th this conference isn't just for a certain age group. The demographics and the speakers that y y you bring in are, are just great. I think it speaks to all ages of, uh, of men, if you say, you know, 13 uh, on up. And, and, and I think it can impact uh, everybody, whether it's uh, in the breakout sessions or in the, the main conferences themselves. It's, uh, it's good for anyone. Okay, when God had provided the opportunity for me to bring a group of men to the Iron Sharpens Iron Conference, uh, little did I know that he actually had an appointment planned for me that day. And what happened that day uh, has given me a refocus and a, uh, a renewed spirit in my walk with him, as well as in my marriage and in my career. Uh, and beyond that, the men that continuously return to the conference are blessed each time they're, they're on their way home from the conference and they're uh, with their conversations. And um, just these small groups that we have now that has spawned off of that conference is just a blessing in our own church and in our community. Cross Trainers is a men's ministry that meets on uh, Wednesday morning, 6 a.m. here at the fire station. Uh, a group of guys just started getting together. We come together with a cup of coffee. Um, we thought Roy would provide donuts, but he seemed to be too tight for that. So it's just coffee and we have a, uh, a good time fellowshipping together. And, and um, Roy always comes up with a video of some type that's pertinent to uh, uh, things going on in men's lives and uh, it's been amazing over the years the way the videos have impacted all of us. Uh, you think that you've seen things and you've heard things and, but uh, it's just been a, a, a real impactful 
uh, morning and it uh, goes on for about an hour and I'm able to stay for that hour and then afterwards uh, the men meet at a local restaurant and grab a sandwich together and uh, are able to have some more fellowship time together. So not only is it just uh, the watching the video and learning some things, but it's the uh, interchange that happens between the guys that uh, is really valuable to each and every one of us. Cross Trainers has become more important because I, I feel like I need more than just what you get on Sunday morning or what you get in your time alone when you're in your Bible study. It's a, it's a time to hear that we all deal with the same stuff, that we all have the same problems and, uh, and everybody there is, is pretty open. Roy does a great job of bringing out people. He's very open himself, which I think allows us to be open about things. We were wanting to be serious about men's ministry. Uh, the problem was that we, as I think a lot of churches are, uh, are well-intentioned for men's ministry, but maybe not well-equipped. And so at that juncture, God did two things. Uh, he raised up some men in the church with a passion for this vision for men's ministry, and he put us in touch with Roy Abbott and Focal Point Ministries. And uh, Roy brought to us an understanding of men and men's ministries uh, from his own personal life, having experienced the transforming power of Jesus in his heart. He brought that, a personal connection with men's ministry, uh, local church involvement, and then also a connection with uh, national men's ministries. And so he brought a lot to the table and we talked about the possibility of his coaching us so that once we launched a men's ministry that would have staying power. And uh, so we did, we, uh, we met with Roy over the course of a year before we even launched the men's ministry. And he met with our lead team and he equipped us with uh, the tools we needed for an effective launch, such as developing vision, uh, getting some values and goals and strategies that would help uh, get us off to a strong start.